Good evening and welcome to the Virtual Transfer College Fair for all Virginia students, sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and mm -hmm. StriveScan. Thank you for joining us this evening. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time through the presentation. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And just so you know, this presentation is being recorded and it will be available within about a week at that same web address, strivescan.com slash Virginia. Uh, so now I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter uh, from Hood College. Hello, welcome. Um, I'm Becca. I'm one of the admission counselors with Hood College, um, and I work primarily with students um, in Southern Maryland and Virginia. Um, so it's nice to be able to join you all virtually. Um, so I'm gonna get started. If you are not very familiar with Hood College, um, we are a private liberal arts college. We are located up in Frederick, Maryland, um, and we are on the smaller side of things. So we have about 1,100 undergraduate students on campus and about 1,000 graduate students. So what you're gonna find at Hood is a very small educational experience within reach of a lot of opportunities. Your average class size is going to be about 14 to 15 students. Um, and there's a couple of components that are really central to a hood education. So one of those is that liberal arts core and the other is hands on learning experiences. So in talking about our location to give you a little bit more of an idea about where hood is located. Um, we are located, as I said, in Frederick, Maryland. Our campus is within uh, the Frederick city limits, but we're in more of the residential section. So campus itself is about 50 acres. Um, everything in terms of academic buildings, residential buildings is on that space. And we are just a short walk from the downtown, which you can see a picture here of Carroll Creek, um, which runs through the heart of downtown Frederick. Um, Frederick itself is the third largest city in Maryland, though you wouldn't necessarily know that walking around the downtown. It's a lot of historic buildings, local businesses. Um, there's a great restaurant scene. So there's a lot to be able to explore as a student. And also, as you are thinking about internship opportunities, there's a lot to be able to take advantage of um, in terms of industry and businesses. So with our location, also to give you kind of an idea of where we are, um, we are just north of the Virginia border um, and about 30 minutes south of the Pennsylvania border. We form a little bit of a triangle here with Baltimore and DC. So we are about an hour from each city. Um, you can see here some of the different uh, businesses and organizations that are available for Hood students as you are thinking about internships or even postgraduate opportunities. Um, so some of our most popular majors on campus are business. Uh, that is our largest major at Hood College. Um, biology, psychology, uh, nursing, and law and criminal justice are also very popular majors as well as education. Um, so for students who are interested in something in the biology field or in the sciences, we're really uniquely situated for you to have access to a lot of really cool opportunities. So one of those is the I-270 Tech Corridor, um, which you can see here. Um, there you can find uh, a lot of pharmaceutical industry, biomedical tech, um, various technology companies. Our campus is also right down the road from Fort Detrick. Um, which is a military base that does a lot of um, medical research. Uh, the National Cancer Research Institute, um, for example, is located right near us. Um, our campus is also right next to Frederick Memorial Hospital, which is a good resource for our nursing students as they do some of their clinical rotations there. Um, as I'm talking about majors here, this is a list of the majors offered at Hood. It's very possible to pursue a double major, um, to do a major and a minor. Any of the majors that have an asterisk next to them, you are able to get certified to teach secondary education. 
Um, so as far as becoming part of the hood community, our transfer process is pretty straightforward. We do have transfer um, counselors who would work with you um, and who would be in touch throughout the process. And we have a transfer specific application on our website. Um, that application is free. There is no fee to apply. And the only additional item we're going to require from you is um, your official transcript from any secondary institution you have attended. Um, if you've taken fewer than 24 transferable credits, we would also need your high school transcript. Um, because we are a private institution, tuition is going to be the same in state and out of state for us. Um, and as a transfer student, you would be considered for uh, one of our merit scholarships. So there are scholarship opportunities available. We are rolling admissions, so you can apply also at any point throughout the year. Um, if you are interested in learning more about Hood, we are offering a full range of virtual visit options. We are also offering um, outdoor socially distanced tours of campus. So it is possible um, to get to know a little bit more about our campus itself. Um, if you're interested in being put in touch with a professor or someone on campus, I absolutely welcome you to um, visit our website, reach out to us in the admission office, um, and we're happy to put you in touch with someone. Um, one of the things that I get really excited to talk about with Hood and that I'll leave you with here um, as I'm wrapping up is that um, Hood is a small community, um, but a really rich and diverse community um, that's very warm and welcoming. So I really look forward to the opportunity um, to get to share that with you if you do visit. Um, and we hope to hear from you. Thank you. Great, uh, thank you, Hood College. Next up, we have William and Mary. All right, hello, welcome everyone. My name is Monica Pinier. I am one of the deans of transfer at William and Mary. I am joined today by my amazing colleague, John David Nichols, who um, will be on the chat, the Q&A. Uh, so please send any questions our way. And again, thank you for joining us and all these great institutions today. So a little about about William and Mary. We are the second oldest institution in the United States, founded in 1693. Here we have an aerial view of our campus. We can't wait for people to come in person to visit. Uh, right now we do offer multiple virtual visit opportunities. Um, but as you can see, the campus itself is very green. We are located in Williamsburg, Virginia, which is in Southeast Virginia, uh, about 45 minutes from the capital, Richmond, Virginia, and 45 minutes to the closest beach, and on a good day, about two and a half hours from D.C. So it's a great location to get involved and enjoy the area. Um, lots of great places to eat around the campus, um, and certainly just a very scenic, uh, beautiful architecture to surround you while you um, study. We have some things that we're pretty proud of. Um, over 60% of our students will take advantage of study abroad, whether that's a week, a month, a semester, or even alternating years. Um, and we do have some of the highest participation in study abroad. We also have over a 60% rate of students who choose to participate in undergraduate research, which is a fabulous opportunity because that really puts a lot of value into your degree if you want to get a job after your bachelor's or prepare for graduate school applications, med school, law school, et cetera. And some other things that we're really proud of is that students in general rank that they're very happy with their William & Mary experience. And I think a lot of that has to do with kind of the tight knit collaborative community that we have. We are actually a public institution, although we have a very kind of smaller private school feel on campus. Um, and I think our students just really make it cool to care. And our students are very involved and we love it. Uh, and they're always trying to make their campus, their community better. We are a largely residential community, um, although transfer students are not required to live on campus. However, because we have so many students on campus, there's always something going on. It's kind of like a city within a city on campus. So there's still plenty of fun things to do and get involved in. We have almost 500 student-led uh, clubs and organizations, uh, anything from a first-gen club, um, uh, multiple uh, like cheese, 
salsa clubs. Again, we're big foodies. Uh, we have 16 Division I sports, plenty of intramurals, and these are all open to transfer students as well. So you can join at any point during your academic tenure at William & Mary. We have a little under 6,500 undergraduate students and over 40 majors and minors. One of my favorite things about William & Mary is that you can really create your own degree at William & Mary. Uh, you don't actually come in with a certain major. They give you a little bit of time. Uh, students will declare their major at the end of their sophomore year. And uh, some students have decided to do completely different things like chemistry and women's studies or um, just kind of create like a, a meld of multiple fields and you work with a faculty advisor to figure out what is best for you. Another thing that I'm really proud of at William & Mary is that we do meet 100% of demonstrated financial need for our Virginia residents. So after doing the FAFSA and CSS profile, if you're a student who receives the Pell Grant, then your tuition and housing very, may very well be completely covered at William & Mary. So transfer student life, uh, we don't want our students to feel like they're just gonna get dropped onto campus on their very first day. We want you to feel as prepared as possible. So we have multiple things in place. We have a 90% graduation rate, which is really important when you're comparing colleges because that tells you that there's lots of supports like, uh, you know, once you're admitted, you are paired with an orientation aid and uh, our first year experience office and multiple advisors to make sure that you are well on your way. We accept the Common App for transfer and there are automatic fee waivers that are placed. So if any of those apply, please select them and you don't even have to request one. Our most competitive applicants do have a 3.5 overall GPA. We admit about 80 students every spring semester and about 200 every fall semester for transfer. If you are a VCCS or a Richard Bland student, we do offer guaranteed admissions for um, William & Mary and Easy Pathways upon completion of your associate degree. Again, feel free to view our website for any virtual visit opportunities, follow us on social media or reach out to us, transfer at wm.edu and Dee Nichols and myself would love to hear from you. Thank you. Great, uh, thank you, William and Mary. Just, just as a reminder, you can ask questions in the Q&A function um, and the panelists would be more than happy to respond to those questions throughout the presentation. So please do feel free to ask any questions. Um, up next, we have Virginia State University. Greetings all, I'm Victoria Nichols. I am with Virginia State University and um, I'm gonna share my screen here. Once again, I am Victoria Nichols and I always have to start with loads of VSU love. So I have to make sure I give that shout out to all of the future transfer students. Um, so, Virginia State University is located in Chesterfield, Virginia. We are a state-supported institution, a historically Black college and university, and we are an 1890 land-grant institution. Um, outside of that information, we are about 30 minutes south of Richmond, Virginia, um, about an hour and a half from the Washington, D.C. area, as well as Tidewater, Virginia. So as I jump into things, I just kind of want to have a visual to show you all before I get started. So I hope you guys enjoyed that um, quick video. However, um, I do wanna share some additional information about Virginia State University. We have our top 10 reasons um, listed here as to um, why you should transfer into Virginia State University. And outside of um, serving as one of the sole individuals to work in, uh, with the transfer population, um, some of our top 10 reasons are listed here. Affordable tuition costs available housing options if needed, transfer scholarship and grant options. Um, we also have the institution and program to program articulations for uh, many of our students. We also have the monthly career opportunities with our outstanding career services. 
um, center on our campus. We have immediate internship opportunities for students um, so that they can continue to build upon their um, resume and, and allow them to become a little bit more marketable. We have the one-on-one -on -one advising for our students, um, which they greatly appreciate. Um, we also have small classroom sizes that our students can benefit from. Um, we also have the equivalency self-service um, area on our website. So if students want to check to see if a course is transferable, they can always plug that information in um, to see what that equivalency will be. And last but not least, we have the personable transformative experience in which each student um, has an opportunity to engage in. Outside of that, as I mentioned earlier, our tuition for Virginia residents for the year is 9,154. So that is something that we do boast about um, being an affordable um, institution. And again, that is for uh, the tuition cost for the year. Some of the most popular question I, um, that students typically ask, I actually have the responses to. So for example, um, we are a medium-sized institution. Um, we have a little over 4,300 students at Virginia State University. So that means, of course, that we benefit from a, a, an exceptional student to faculty ratio being 15 to one. Um, we also have the um, opportunity of having a 20 for the average class size, and we have 236 acres of land on our campus. Um, we have a secondary campus, which primarily um, many of our students who operate within our College of Agriculture uh, benefit from our secondary campus because that is our um, farm. Um, and as an 1890 land institution, um, land grant institution, that is definitely um, beneficial to those students. We also offer, outside of our College of Agriculture, our College of Humanities and Social Sciences, our College of Education, our Reginald F. Lewis College of Business. Um, we also have our College of Natural and Health Sciences, and of course, our College of Engineering and Technology. Additional information that I can share with you, um, we definitely assist our students with becoming well-rounded individuals. And so part of that, um, students can find out more about those opportunities with our student activities. We have 17 NCAA Division II sports. Um, we are very competitive. I am a graduate of Virginia State. And so we get really excited about our sports programs. Um, we have 90 plus clubs and organizations that students can become a part of. That includes our honor societies um, as well. And of course, we have over 130 plus study abroad opportunities that our students take advantage of. And students who do not have an um, have their passport, we do assist them through the month of November by assisting them with um, obtaining their passport um, to be able to travel. The Guaranteed Admissions Agreement is primarily for our VCCS students and Richard Bland College. And so um, we do offer that for students who have an Associate of Arts or an Associate of Science degree. The GPA or cumulative grade point average to transfer into Virginia State University is a 2.0. Um, and so we do uh, need to require or we, we do mandate the students send us their official transcripts from each institution that they have attended. That is very important um, to be able to make sure that we are providing fair um, credit equivalencies. Um, for students who have an Associate of Applied Science, um, the, the Guaranteed Admissions Agreement does not pertain to them. However, we do have course by course um, uh, transfer options. We do have uh, scholarship opportunities for students, and I love to share that information with you. Um, if you have any questions, I am Victoria Nichols, and I'm so happy to be able to present to you all today. Thanks so very much, and have a great one. Great, thank you so much, uh, Virginia State University. The University of Mary Washington will be next. Hi, everybody. My name is Jose Torres, and I am the Assistant Director of Transfer Admissions at the University of Mary Washington. All right, UMW is a public liberal arts and sciences university located in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Uh, we are midway between Washington, D.C. in Richmond, Virginia. So it allows, we like to tell people that it's an ideal college town location because it allows for a lot of diverse opportunities for our students in the Fredericksburg area, the D.C. area, in the Richmond area, whether that be internships, job opportunities, and things of that nature. 
we have right around 4,200 undergraduate students. Uh, In-state tuition is going to be about $13,574, while out-of-state tuition is going to be about $30,000 uh, for a full-time student for the year. We have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio and our average class size is 19. That being said though, if you were to choose uh, one of our more popular majors like say business or psychology, you could see that average class size fluctuate to be a little bit higher. But what we do like to tell people is that those smaller class sizes allow for students to build unique relationships, not only with their colleagues and fellow students, but also with their professors, which can in turn lead to a lot of really unique opportunities for our students when it comes to research opportunities and things of that nature. <clears throat> When it comes to student life, we have more than 150 clubs and organizations at the university and they run the gamut from social justice initiatives to community service to just uh, music, uh, music and interpretive dance and things of that nature. Uh, when it comes to athletics, we have 212 athletic conference championships that we're very proud of. Uh, some of our more popular sports at the university are gonna be uh, lacrosse, soccer, uh, tennis, uh, swimming. Uh, I believe our swim team hasn't lost a conference championship in the entire existence of the conference. So that's something that we are very proud of. Um, and we offer 150 study abroad programs in 54 different countries. So a lot of really, awesome and interesting things are happening, whether that be, you know, study abroad opportunities for internships and other things like that, we can make that happen for you at the University of Mary Washington. <clears throat> When you are ready to apply, we are on rolling admission. So you can apply at any point for the spring, summer, or fall, be reviewed and be admitted for those upcoming semesters. But some dates that we want to make you aware, aware of when it comes to filing dates uh, for the spring is October 15th, the summer is March 15th, and the fall is April 1st. Now, like I said, we are on rolling admissions, but those dates are important if you're looking at merit scholarship consideration. Uh, the cool thing about merit scholarship consideration is that you don't have to do anything to apply for those scholarships. Those are given to you automatically based on the information that we see when we're reviewing your application. So if you want to be considered for a merit scholarship, you want to make sure that you have your application submitted by the dates on the screen. <clears throat> Uh, when you are ready to apply, you can apply one of two ways to the university. You can apply through our website directly, or you can apply through the Common App. Um, there's a $50 application fee that's associated with the Common App, but if you speak to me, I can provide you with an application fee waiver so you don't have to worry about paying for those sorts of things. Uh, so what we need from you, like I mentioned, is the application, official transcripts from all schools previously attended. Even if you haven't attended that school in 10, 15, 20 years, submit those transcripts because we may be able to use some of those uh, classes that you've taken previously to kind of uh, to kind of knock off some of those classes that you uh, took pre to knock off some of those classes so you don't have to take them again. <clears throat> and then uh, once we have the application and your official transcripts, it comes to me for review and we try to turn those things around within two to three weeks. Um, we also have a, a guaranteed admissions agreement with VCCS uh, schools as well as Richard Blaine College. If you have a 325 GPA, you're earning your associate's degree. Uh, and you're earning your associate's degree, <clears throat> we can guarantee your admission to the University of Mary Washington. Uh, ideally, a competitive applicant is uh, anywhere between a 3.0 to a 3.25 when you're transferring to the university. Um, we also have over $43 million in financial aid from 450 sources that are available to students, not just also including the merit scholarships that we do offer to the university. So if you're looking to get in contact with us, you can reach us at this number here, or admit at umw.edu. Um, I will be your guide throughout this entire transfer process and I really look forward to working with you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Great, uh, thank you, University of Mary Washington. Next, we will hear from Bellevue University. Hi, hi, my name is Jade Williams and I am the relationship manager for Bellevue University and I'll be talking a little bit about some of the benefits of transferring to Bellevue. So I know a lot of you are wondering who is Bellevue University or where our school is located. So Bellevue University is the largest nonprofit university in Bellevue, Nebraska. We are accredited, regionally accredited by the Higher Learning Commission, which is a member of the North Central Association of Colleges and Schools. Um, accreditation is very important, so you should always make sure that you know that the school that you are planning to attend is regionally accredited and that your college credits will transfer with you 
and that you are aware of any stipulations that may occur with that. Um, we are in good company with our accreditation ranks alongside a few of our counterparts, including Ohio State, Arizona State University, Notre Dame, and the University of Michigan. So we're a little bit different. Uh, we actually have partnered with community, college, community colleges across the country um, to help students transfer their full associate's degree towards their bachelor's degree. So you'll complete your associate's degree come entirely before you transfer over to Bellevue University, and you'll be at a junior standing um, once you bring over that associate's degree with us. So with our flexible online programs, you'll be able to reach your bachelor's degree without ever having um, to leave your community. If you're not looking to attend classes physically on campus in Bellevue, Nebraska, you have the option to complete your degree entirely, on, um, entirely online. So we'll ensure that your transfer process is as smooth and convenient as possible. So we offer more than 50 bachelor's degrees and many are good pathways directly from your associate's degree. So if you want to change pathways or if you'd like to diversify your knowledge or change your degree, then we'll be able to help with many of our cohort, op cohort options um, that have no prerequisites. So with our cohort programs we have, you actually take one class every six weeks. And we have a capstone that you complete at the end of your major requirements. So you're actually able to complete your bachelor's degree in as little as 18 months if you bring over that associate's degree first. Um, here are a few of our undergraduate programs that we have, um, some including leadership and management. We have marketing. We have um, public service degrees um, like your criminal justice or your cybersecurity. We also have information technology as well as business and some of our healthcare and human services programs like healthcare management and behavioral science. So many of our undergraduate programs uh, flow seamlessly into our graduate programs and we have over 30 master degree programs and most you can take anywhere between 18 to 24 months depending on the program and the format. Um, a few of our graduate programs that we have include leadership, we have organizational performance, accounting, human resources, and project management, just to name a few. So you work hard for your credits and we want to make sure that you keep them. Um, many universities put a limit on how many credits that they will accept. However, at Bellevue University, we believe that all of your credits from your institution, if regionally accredited, um, are worthy of transfer. So you'll be able to save money and complete your bachelor's degree faster when you transfer your associate's degree over. So you'll receive credit for all college level courses, level 100 or above, if you pass those courses with C's or better, everything transfers over. So not only will you um, transfer your credits, but every single one of your credits will count towards your bachelor's degree. So your degree completion is actually closer than you think, and this is how um, the numbers break down. So in order to graduate with your bachelor's degree, you need a total of 127 credit hours. Students graduate somewhere around the 60 credit hours. So this is gonna complete all of your general education courses, so all of your Englishes, um, your math courses, and your science, all of those is gonna fall into those gen heads. Most students, when they graduate with their associate's degree, have over 60 credits. So any credits that you have over that 60 credit hour is actually gonna fall into that next category with us. We, you need 18 credit hours for electives. So if you graduate with your associate's degree at 78 credit hours, you'll have all of your general education courses completed and you'll have all of your elective requirements completed as well. So the only thing that you do have to take when you transfer over to Bellevue is 49 credit hours. You'll complete 40 credit hours for whatever major you choose. And then all of our students have to complete a capstone program after your major requirements, which we call our Kirkpatrick Signature Series, and that's nine credit hours. So again, my name is Jade Williams, and if you would like more information about any of the programs that we do have or about the transfer process, you can definitely give me um, an email at jade.williams at bellevue.edu, or you can give me a call at 434-797-8502, and you can definitely take a look at our website. It shows a list of all of our programs that we do have, as well as the requirements for those programs, and it talks a little bit more about the transfer process in general. Thank you so much. Great, uh, thank you, Bellevue University. And finally, our last college during this session will be Eastern Mennonite University.
Hi, how are you all doing tonight? Um, I'm David Yoder, here from Eastern Mennonite University, where I'm an admissions counselor. So I do work directly with all of our transfer students. This is our campus. It's in Harrisonburg, Virginia. In case you don't know where Harrisonburg is, it's centrally located in Virginia, just about an hour and a half from Washington, DC, 45 minutes from Charlottesville, close to Richmond and Roanoke as well. There's a lot to do in Harrisonburg and around Harrisonburg. Here's some of our natural attractions. And on campus, we are a smaller school. So you can see here, we have about a thousand students. You can also see our students do come in accomplishing things at a really high level. And David, see I, David, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, your screen is not being shared. Oh. oh my goodness, here we go. Can you see it now? Yes, Great. we can see it now. Awesome, sounds good. Um, so I'm gonna flip back through two slides before that, just so you can see a picture of our campus. And then I'll get going again. Um, so that's our campus in Harrisonburg. Um, like I said, there's a lot to do in the area and we do have a really cool campus itself with about a thousand students. You can see what somebody who's coming in as a traditional first year would have accomplished in terms of their test scores and their GPA. We are test optional for transfers, so you don't need to submit any test scores. And we do look for transfer students to come in with a 2.0. So you've already shown us you can be successful, um, so you don't need to meet those first year GPA requirements. Like I said, we are a smaller school, but we do have awesome facilities, whether that's some of our brand new labs or different buildings on campus. We do have over 50 different majors and minors. And for transfer students, I do wanna point out, um, if you are a nursing student, we do have an accelerated um, RN to BSN program. So that's a way to get that BSN nursing degree a little bit faster. 98% of our job seeking graduates are employed in grad school or serving in a full-time position within one year of graduation. So college is definitely an investment and at EMU that investment pays off. We have acceptance rates to medical school that are nearly double the national average. 100% of our nursing graduates were offered jobs before graduation last year along with 100% of our teacher education program grads working in education within six months of graduation, and 100% of our accounting grads passed the CPA exam on their first try. And one of the reasons that we see those numbers is that you really get to know professors. We have a median class size of 15 and a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. So you are gonna build relationships with the professors you're working with. And learning doesn't just stop in the classroom. We have really good internship and practicum programs, whether that's something like an internship with a local business or a nursing clinical, you are gonna get a ton of experience outside of the classroom. One of our flagship internship programs is our Washington Community Scholars Center. We offer group living in Washington, DC. You live with other EMU students and professors. You can take classes at a DC area university and do an internship that can be up to 30 hours a week. So we've had some really cool internship placements there. And it doesn't just stop in Washington, DC. We do have a robust study abroad program that goes from three to six weeks during the summer to a full semester abroad during the school year. You earn 15 credits while you're doing it, which keeps you in track to graduate within four semesters. Here's some of the places that we've gone, but we have gone all over the world as well. So that's a really cool program, whether you go to Washington, DC, or whether you go internationally. And on our campus, there's a lot to do as well, whether that's things like our Fall Fest and Homecoming Weekend, Tuesday Trivia, theater productions or art gallery openings, there's always something going on. We also have a lot of recreation activities. So there's a ton of rock climbing around Harrisonburg and you can get some practice on our climbing wall as well. We have intramural sports and an awesome fitness center for students that's open pretty much all day. Here's some clubs and organizations that we have. The beautiful thing about being a small school is that you're totally able to start a new club if you want to and sort of choose your own adventure there. So at one point I heard there was an ev even an introverts club. So if introverts can get together and start a club, pretty much anybody can do it. And we do offer a lot of student services too. I do wanna quickly highlight our Academic Success Center, which provides free peer and professional tutoring to students and our Health and Wellness Center, where you can go sit down, see a nurse practitioner and be prescribed a medication if there's something that you need. We are a private school. We're affiliated with the Mennonite Church. And you'll see that in a few ways. We have core values of community, service, and peace on campus. And one of the things that I loved is you can take advantage of that religious aspect to the fullest degree you want to. Um, nobody's gonna force you to participate in anything, but also nobody is going to stop you from taking advantage of those resources for spiritual development. 
And you can see these core values exemplified in the way that EMU creates unifying leaders. Lema Bowie graduated in 2011 and won the Nobel Peace Prize. And not all of our students go on to win the Nobel Peace Prize, but all of our students do learn leadership on our diverse campus. 50 plus countries represented, 30 plus states, and 50 plus denominations. If you are interested in sports, we are an NCAA Division III school, so we do compete at a high level. You can see some of our programs there. And the fan experience is amazing too. Students get into all the games for free. We have giveaways like t-shirts and other stuff as well. And finally, I know with an education, you're wondering how am I gonna pay for this? At EMU, 99% of undergrads receive financial assistance. So even though some private schools have a higher sticker price, we do try to make this up by giving grants, need-based aid, academic scholarships, departmental scholarships, and work-study programs. We do have transfer-specific grants, and many of our transfer students have more than half of their tuition covered when they come to EMU. So definitely be sure to ask me about that as well. An average financial assistance package is more than $37,000, and we gave away over $17 million in financial aid for 2020 and 2021. So if it sounds like you're interested in EMU, I'd encourage you to take some next steps. Our campus is open for individual visits. If you go to our website, and click on the visit button, you can sign up to come to campus and check it out. While you're there, I'd be happy to sit down and go over your transcripts with you, make sure you don't have any questions, um, and talk to you about how your credits will transfer in. For transfer students, the most important thing is that we get an official transcript from any other colleges that you've attended. And I can guarantee you, as long as you went to an accredited college, your credits are going to transfer in. Um, they might not transfer to a specific program, but we are gonna count them as credits. Then fill out our application, submit your FAFSA, we'll get an award letter out to you, and I'll be here to walk you through that entire process. Awesome, thank you so much. Great, thank you so much to our panelists. I just wanna remind uh, students that are on to uh, feel free to ask any questions through the Q&A and our panelists will respond to you. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you a minute um, if you would like to do that. There have been a couple of questions asked. Um, one in particular was if there was an opportunity to meet the officers personally. So um, there is contact information that the college reps have left um, in answer to that question. So please feel free to jot that information down if you would like to contact any of the college reps. Um, but perhaps uh, while we wait maybe for some other questions to come through, I don't know if any of the college reps would like to just uh, talk briefly about um, if your institution is accepting um, on-campus uh, visits in person to meet with an actual counselor, or is it just being done uh, through phone or email at this time? Uh, well, um... I can jump in right here. Um, UMW is currently accepting in-person visits. We have regular information sessions twice a day, Monday through Friday, and the occasional Saturday. That also is associated with the tour. We're, uh, we have multiple tour guides that are going out and there are mask policies in place. So it allows for safe social distancing while you come to campus. We also have a giant pavilion outside of our normal admissions area where we can do outdoor information sessions as well. Um, I'm available virtually and over the phone and I, on the off chance there are some times when I uh, am uh, on campus and I can meet with students in person. Uh, more, more often than not though I am, in working, I am working from the safety of my home right now. But uh, if need be that's definitely something that we can arrange and my contact information is in the uh, Q&A if you want to set something up. Virginia State University, um, unfortunately, is not offering um, campus tours. We are um, looking forward to meeting um, with our future students. However, um, we do have a virtual tour experience. Um, I will list, list my information again um, in the Q&A, so that way we can set up that um, individual or group virtual tour experience. Hey, so William and Mary, for this fall semester, we are only doing virtual visit options. However, if you email transfer at wm.edu, uh, fellow Dean John David Nichols or myself will answer that and we can set up a Zoom appointment. I can share my Calendly link and, and set something up over the phone, Zoom. Uh, we do have some self-guided tour options if you wanted to come to campus, just to view the campus itself, but we hope to meet students in person once it's safer to do so in 
Great, and I think I mentioned it in my presentation, but EMU is currently open for individual visits. Um, we're trying to limit the number of people who come for group visits, but because we're a smaller campus, if you want to schedule a visit, you can go to emu.edu slash visit, um, and I'd be happy to meet with you uh, when you're on campus. Yeah, and um, if you are interested in visiting Hood, we are offering, uh, I think I mentioned, a few different options. So we um, are also doing a limited number of in-person visits um, where we are having one visitor at a time. Those are outdoor tours. Um, we do have a mask policy as well and they're socially distanced, um, but we are also offering virtual visits. Um, so if you go to hood.edu, um, and I'll make sure my information is in the chat. Um, you can definitely feel free to set something up with us. And Bellevue, we actually offer virtual visits um, through our website. So you can definitely visit our website at bellevue.edu and you'll be able to take a virtual tour of our college. Great, uh, thank you so much. Uh, for answering that question. Um, as a reminder for students, um, you can certainly uh, continue to submit um, questions um, on the chat. Um, those questions, uh, if you do submit, and we do run out of time here, uh, the college reps can uh, and will receive those questions and they will be able to follow up with you as well. So um, we're getting near to the end of our time here. So um, I just want to go ahead and wrap this up and say thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Just to let you know that when you close out of this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey that we hope that you'll take the time to answer. We would really appreciate any feedback that you could provide to us. Um, also, just as a reminder, this is one of many sessions that is being offered. So please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And those can be um, scheduled at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And then also as a reminder that in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings also at strivescan.com slash Virginia. Thank you so much and I hope you have a great evening.